in the part one, I was about to say that uh, uh, a recent example of uh, of uh, the mistake that can be made is in uh, press TV from Iran. The uh, announcer, the narrator, who interviews uh, guests, the skinny guy. I haven't seen his name for a while, but he interviewed a Nazi. You know, this Nazi comes on and says, you know, uh, you know, uh, the two uh, previous guests, you know, were referring to the Zionist leadership as a, as a gang of Nazis. This guy, a Nazi, comes up and says, no, no, they're not Nazis. You know, uh, the Nazis would have taken care of the problem, you know, on behalf of the Palestinians and uh, everything would have been okay. <laughs> no, they're Nazis. not Nazis. They're, uh, they're the, Nazis. oh yeah. Yeah, they use they have this cliche called international Jewry. <laughs> and this is supposed to explain everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, are we on, on uh, record? Yeah, we're recording. Yes, so yeah. another narrator from Press TV in Iran, mm -hmm. the chubby guy, he does a whole feature presentation on Jewish Voice for Priests mentions their name explicitly, shows their symbol and shows, you know, their actions and shows an interview with, with one of their demonstrations on mm -hmm. campus. So, you know, like, I think that uh, e even Press TV was aware, you know, of the problem involved there. And the skinny guy, I haven't seen him on uh, broadcast, you know, uh, ever again. I hope he never comes back. Anyway. <laughs> that, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty simplistic of him to do that. Yeah, and he had no nothing to say, you know, no criticism, you know, total, you know, like he was let the Nazi was allowed, you know, to go ahead and say, you know, whatever, you know, at length. But there's been never a Jewish Bundes has been interviewed on press TV or anywhere. Yeah. You know, so uh this is you know pissed me off. Yeah, I understand. I understand. I understand where you come from. Yeah. Yeah. So uh from now from here we go about uh the Zionists, uh, they still want to go into Rafah hmm. because there's still about four brigades of Hamas. Uh, they're still intact. They want to go and destroy it. Hmm. Well, they destroyed the other 20 uh, in the rest of Gaza, which is, uh, it's kind of... Uh, Supposedly. You know, you know <laughs> who's fighting then in, 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 the, in Beit Hanun and Jabalia and other places in the north. Is it ghosts? The ghosts of those 20 brigades they destroyed? Mm -hmm. Who are they fighting in in, in uh, Khan Yunus or Deir al The ghosts of those 20 uh, brigades? Um, come on. You know, uh, I think I think the Zionists are stuck. They're stuck. They can't get out uh, from Gaza. They cannot go stay there. Uh, they are taking everyday heavy losses. Lots of losses. I wouldn't say heavy losses, but you know, quite a bit of losses. And uh, what they do in return, they, you know, blow up homes, uh, infrastructure, kill people uh, as they go. Um, I think this is the end of uh, the the Zionist uh, government. Uh, mm -hmm. They're stuck. They don't know what to do. Uh, they're. I don't want to be in their shoes. <laughs> yeah, because uh, there's also actually probably the uh, ICG, ICJ, I think, the International Criminal Court, ICC. They might be uh, issuing uh, arrest warrants uh, to Ben Netanyahu and his army, uh, top brass. Yeah. So it's it's they are in trouble. You know, you can't you can't go into murdering, killing over forty thousand. Innocent uh, civilians injuring over eighty thousand, destroying about eighty percent of the infrastructure of Gaza, and get away with it. You can, it's it's impossible. Mm. So uh, the Zionists are uh, in deep, uh, you know <laughs> what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. There's talk of them doing a, a big a military maneuver into southern Lebanon yes. to go after Hezbollah. Yes, and they've been saying and, that and for about four months. Yes, and and they also say there's they're, they're going to go into Rafa, and yes. uh, the only indication that I've seen, you know, that they're actually going to go into Rafa, 
is uh, that they've uh, they've bought uh, 10,000 tents or 40,000 tents or something like this. Now, what are they going to do with, you know, 40,000 tents, you know, in the face of, you know, one and a half million people? Yeah, no, like let's say that each tent has four people. Mm. So uh, that's, uh, let's say, a quarter of a million people. Let's put it this way. That, that's all. So what about the, the other one million and, uh, and a quarter million? Uh, what are you going to do with them? Kill them? So, so what I think that indicates is that they, like we talked about before, you know, they intend to s separate the men from their families, you know, take the men out, you know, put them into some kind of a detention camp, oh. you know, with the 40,000 tents, leave the, the women and children, camps. concentration camps, and then, uh, and then leave their families, you know, to, to suffer, die of famine, and, uh, and even be bombed, you know, as, 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 uh, what, with what purpose? Seemingly, you know, only to demoralize the Palestinians and to induce a climate of surrender. But Palestinians don't surrender. Period. People don't surrender. Armies do surrender. Gangs do surrender. People don't. Never heard in my life there's a, a people that surrender to uh, a colonizer. Even here in North America, the, the indigenous people have not surrendered to the white colonists. Even it's it's dark. To them, it's still, you know, but they haven't surrendered the white, mm -hmm. the indigenous people of uh, North America. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's. Uh, yeah. And the reason being because people cannot surrender, otherwise they die. Exactly. No, it's. A, I think I think the Zionists are are playing. They're playing. Uh, you know, I think they're bluffing. Okay, and, and uh, even if they go into Rafa, what are they gonna accomplish? Nothing. They accomplish more murder, yes. They might kill thousands, about thousands, when they enter, but they cannot take out, you know, Hamas as they, you know, say. Yeah. And what? Well, well, okay, they went and they take over and, and they do whatever they done to uh, Khan Yunus or uh, Gaza City and the adjacent area. Did they get anything in return? Did they return, return their so-called hostages? No. Did they arrest the Hamas leadership? No. Did they have full control of Khan Yunus or the northern Gaza? No. What they resulted is resulted of more mass murder of, of civilians. So um, this, okay, what's next for the Zionists after that? Nothing. Yeah. It's the same. Only excuses. One young Zionist who used to come to speak with me every every. Sunday when I was on the vigil in front of the Jewish community campus in Montreal here. He was trying to argue that Israel was not being disproportionate because they were killing mostly Hamas members. I said, mm -hmm. what do you mean Hamas members? He says, well, you know, they kill, uh, they kill uh, so many thousands, you know, Hamas fighters. And then the others, you know, were, and I said, well, you know, he claimed that it was, you know, uh, two thirds, you know, were Hamas, and only one third, you know, were civilians, and then the one third who are civilians are just collateral damage. So I said, okay. "What do you mean, two thirds, you know, of the of the uh, civilian deaths, you know, were Hamas? You mean you're including Palestinian police, you're including Palestinian civil servants, you're including Palestinian teachers, you're including Palestinian doctors, nurses." All those are Hamas. He says, "Yeah." <laughs> to them, everybody is Hamas. Yeah, it's very simple. Like Oof. when the when the British, the Anglo-American invasion to Iraq, they referred to the death of the Iraqi civilians as collateral damage. Actually, the first the first time this term appeared and become used widely used is by the Anglo-American invasion to Iraq. Mm. Where the result in murdering the result of murdering tens of thousands of civilians, they call them collateral damage. Mm. It's like uh, you know, like a chair in the front in the front yard, it just being blown out to pieces. That's collateral damage. So mm. basically, they are nothing but chairs. It's okay. Yeah. It's collateral damage. Yeah. Mm. That's yeah. this. Is, this is where racism uh, resides. This is yeah. the true uh, ugly face of racism. That brown people. Muslim people, 
non-white European are nothing but chairs. They're blown to pieces and become collateral damage. This is what we call in racism. This is actually worse racism than apartheid South Africa. It's worse than the Nazis. This is disgusting. This is a horror. It's it's appalling to mm. just to hear people saying, you know, uh, collateral damage. Mm. Yeah, even the Nazis, you know, were, I heard one term squeamish about killing civilians, and they would set their Ukrainian Polish mercenaries yes. to do the mm. work for them, and yes. also to clean it up. You know, they'd have you know the uh, the, the Jewish prisoners uh, cleaning up the bodies and and burning them in the crematoria. Mm -hmm. uh, because otherwise, you know, they would themselves, you know, go into the crematoria. But, you know, you know, the, the Zionists are more indoctrinated even, and, and they're not squeamish. They're, they're joyful. They make oh, yeah. videos, you know, absolutely congratulating themselves and, and, you know, demonstrating how proud they are of what they've killed. Even one guy, you know, is how, how proud he is to kill Palestinian babies, even, you know, overtly saying so. This yes. I've never seen before. They're psychopaths. They are just brainwashed a uh, 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 cult of psychopaths. That's what mm. they are. There's, mm. They're actually, they are, the more they show of this uh, nature of mass murder, the more they show how sick and psychopath they are. And the more they are, they are really removed from humanity and human, mm. basic human values of respecting other humans. Mm. That's, that's that's really sick. It's as if you know they've absorbed anti-Semitism in their own minds to the extent that they feel so demeaned. You know, they feel like their their own value is so little that they can treat others with the same degree of value. Yeah, yes, another way to look at it. That's how yeah. they look. Uh, probably that could be another uh, aspect of their nature. That's that's sad. But uh, anyway, the Zionist state is it's uh, counting its days in my uh, mind, especially more and more, and more uh, after their uh, carnage it's going on in Gaza. Uh, if there were some Arab people, even Palestinians, willing to coexist with this uh, state or this entity, it's no more. Mm. People are sick and tired of it. It's time to go. Mm. It's it's time for Israel to be dismantled, totally yes. dismantled, okay, yes. as an apartheid murderous state. And uh, those who came from uh, Europe, they should be sent back to Europe. Oh, they came from Morocco. Go back to Morocco, and uh, only on on a on a on person on an and person person basis, they will be allowed to stay if they're not uh, part of the mass murder in Palestine. Of the killing machine, yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I think a lot will leave. You know, once they don't have the power to grant them the privileges that they seek. They will, they will, uh, many will go back, you know, to, to Morocco. And they've already begun to return to Morocco. Even mm -hmm. Russian, Russian Jewish uh, population have, have left in, to go to uh, where? Berlin. <laughs> you know, that's the yep. preferred location now. So, but I was going to ask you, you know, what the prospects are for Palestine state now to be recognized. They're talking about recognizing the Palestine state there. But I think that only works if Israel were to be suspended from the United Nations or expelled from the United uh, Nations at the same time. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, you know, the whole thing of recognizing Palestinian state, where? Mm -hmm. Where is this Palestinian state? In the air, in the thin air? I mean, even if, if the PA or the Palestinian or the PLO have not said where they want this state to be, okay, did not declare the state. They have not declared the state. Say uh, we declare the Palestinian state on so and so area. Why would the world, you know, recognize this? It's to mm -hmm. me just only semantics and just uh, it's a waste of time and energy to be, uh, you know, wasted on this uh, recognition. Okay, if there were no such declaration, 
okay? And there is no such place to be uh, based on. This uh, recognition, it's something is, uh, it will uh, fade in the thin air. Mm. Uh, so far, I'm that's not... what's happened. That's what you know, we've experienced. That's what we've seen so far, yes. Uh, yeah. Hamas so... came out with a new position saying that uh, with a ceasefire and recognition of a Palestine state, that they would, their, their latest negotiating position is that they would uh, agree to dissolve the Al Qassam Brigade into a Palestinian uh, national defense force, and that they're uh, willing to join the PLO and reconstruct the Palestinian government with elections to become a government of national unity and, and a government of national reconciliation, as they call it in Libya. So, uh, and you know, this it contradicts, you know, the claim made by most media and uh, the Zionists that uh, Hamas refuses to recognize um, the, the Zionist state, even though they have recognized the Zionist state already for negotiations, which were successful in carrying out a seven-day truce the other day. So there's, even while there's no political recognition of the Zionist state by Hamas, for negotiating purposes, they're willing to negotiate. They're willing to go that far. I, and yet, I think they're not. It's not been announced. You know, like no media will announce. You know what the Hamas position is. You know, the media never announces anything that Hamas says. Or uh, there's no press releases from us from Hamas that are that are re reported on like any sort of you know like press release, you know, from from a Zionist uh, military officer speaking on behalf of the of the offensive in Gaza, you know, they get every word that they say, you know, is broadcast on, on television. But Hamas, never, never any report whatsoever on what Hamas has to say. I have a problem with this uh, Hamas uh, position. I have yes. a big problem with it. Okay. The problem stems that the same stand, or this, uh, yeah, Hamas stand, was always the stand of the PLO since 1974 to accept the two-state solution based on 1967 world order with Jerusalem, uh, uh, so-called East Jerusalem as a Palestinian state. Okay, what we got nothing. We got nothing in return. The mm -hmm. the world, the United States, the Europe, the Zionists, uh, they look the other way and continue the colonization of the West Bank Gaza Strip. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, in my opinion, uh, this is a waste of time by Hamas, okay, to to uh, to put forward such uh, useless idea of recognizing a, a fascist, murderous, Nazi state, okay, as 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 a as an acceptable state in Palestine. My position is no. I think the Palestinians they ought to start thinking outside the box. Okay, we ought to go back to uh, the League of the Nations that when was uh, a mandate, it was mandate for the Palestinian people, okay, and not for the uh, for the Zionist movement. We we demand entire state of our own in Palestine. The colonists have no right whatsoever, zero rights in Palestine as a colonist, and it states so even by the resolution of the United uh, the League of the Nations to create a Palestinian state as, as a mandated by the League of the Nations. Therefore, any acceptance of a, a state in, 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 in Palestine for the Zionists, in my opinion, is a treason. Okay? And is not, it doesn't get us anywhere. It did, not, it did not get Arafat anything. It did not get Abu Mazen anything. The Zionists using these kind of recognitions or, or initiatives said, look, the Palestinians willing to recognize us, therefore we have the right to be here, but they don't do anything about it. So uh, 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 what we said after, before October 7, 2023 is not like October 7, after October 7, 2023. The Zionist state got to go. The Zionist state has to be dismantled. A Palestinian state has to be uh, built there and the Zionist colonists got to go. 
uh, I have I make no apologies. Yes, I am not, I am I'm not for the uh, so-called mass murder of the Jewish people in fact no I'm not against that I'm not against that 100 percent. I am with peaceful dismantlement of the state of Israel and with uh, dignify uh, um, you know uh, removal of the colonists from Palestine back to where they come from. Wow. Hamas yes. they got this wrong. Yes, there's there's so many problems, you know, with the proposed two-state solution. Because first of all, what legitimacy can Israel claim? The only legitimacy that they have is Resolution 181, 1947, right. which is yes. only 52% of Palestine, not 78% of Palestine, right. as it existed at, in, in the date of 1967. Yeah. But yes. when they refer to two-state solution, they always refer to the boundaries of 1967 with with the alterations that, you know that's a whole fabrication you know that so you know what in order it's to, a, uh, yes the arab states and the plo they played along this uh you know uh yeah. mirage of, yeah. of a state on the west bank gaza strip even the gaza strip as we said before it's half what the size it was in 1948 mm. you know so it it's just the, it's a whole sham. The whole thing is a sham. Okay, yeah. two state so, solution based on nineteen sixty seven war border is a uh, sham. Sixty seven borders, you know, that that proposal for negotiations with the Zionist state means that the Palestinians, in accepting nineteen sixty seven as the, the negotiating point, the beginning of the negotiating point, means that they have to accept the occupation. Of Palestinian territories beyond the legal limits imposed by the 1947, you know, 181 exactly. partition resolution. Exactly. Exactly. So, the, exactly. so they're saying, okay, yeah, sure, sure, you know, negotiations, but you have to accept that half uh, of the territory that was stolen, you know, will remain stolen. <laughs> exactly. That, that, this is this is what I find. I find this 1967 borders sham is a treason. Yeah. By the Palestinian to accept Palestinian leadership, whether it's it's a PLO or our latest stand by uh, clever Hamas, say yeah we accept you know blah blah that's that's baloney. It's mm. it, enough is enough. Okay, mm. it, it's enough. The Zionist colony has to go. There's no two ways about it. Palestine is for the Palestinians, and that's it. Okay, I agree with you, and in fact, I wrote an elaboration of this, as you know. And when I wrote my book in Nablus, the, and I titled it The Federation of Palestinian and Hebrew Nations, there's no Israel in my conception of what is to be. Israel cannot be. What there is in actuality is a certain resident population, a colonial population that may or may not remain according to its own wishes and may or may not remain depending upon whether or not criminals, military criminals, can be prosecuted and sent off into exile, or if they prefer, because they're so nationalist, to remain in Palestine, they can spend 10 years in prison and then come out and be rehabilitated, something like that. But there can be no state that is a Zionist state anymore. There can only be what remains is a people. And they have, over time, become a certain political culture of their own, and is uh, uh, an, uh, an Israeli culture, Hebraic culture, which is not shared with the rest of the Jewish people in the world. And a majority of the Jewish people don't even live there. So this, you know, subsection of the Jewish people that wish to remain will have to do so only uh, with the recognition that this is Palestine and Palestine belongs to the Palestinians. Point one. Two, where they insist that they have to be recognized as being Jewish, there is a certain merit in that. There is a precedence in the uh, uh, dhimmi status offered by the Ottoman Empire, by the Arab Empire, which gave recognition to the Jewish people and protected the Jewish people. But there were certain uh, uh, lackings uh, uh, um, in that, which led to those uh, Jewish people in the Arab countries, the Jewish Arabs, to fall for the Zionist line. Mm. Uh, but uh, 
the point I'm I'm trying to make is that the remaining Jewish population in Palestine cannot be treated as simply individual citizens. One, they don't speak the language. Two, um, they have, you know, their national consciousness. Uh, and three, they want to have their own uh, cultural institutions. All of that together comprises a self-government, but not a state. So I can see there being a, an, uh, a Hebrew government for the Hebrew-speaking people, nation, but that's as far as I'm willing to go. Uh, I don't know. Uh, that's, that's to be debated. Uh, my stance stands as this, uh, that they were uh, uh, prior to uh, Sai Spico or the Balfour Declaration, there used to be about uh, about uh, 2 to 4 percent of the Palestinians were Jewish. Okay, well, or, or, or the indigenous Palestinian people. So um, I'm willing to work with that start uh, starting point as uh, for the colonists uh, because they have no place. Like all the colonial uh, colonial settlements are residing on Palestinian land. Okay, all of it. Okay, mm -hmm. from Tel Aviv to Naharia, Netanya, you name it. All are Palestinian land, and this Palestinian land has to go. Back to their rightful owners. He cannot. There's no compromise about that. Mm -hmm. So that leave those people. Uh, they have to go back where they come from. Uh, whether they're second or third generation is not my problem. I have people who own this land, and this land has to go to the rightful owners. So uh, I think uh, those people they have to be uh, compensated by a state or kind of a Jewish state in Europe. Okay. Uh, ah. by the, by, <laughs> hey, that yeah. would be. That would yeah, be one solution, the, yeah. yeah. By the colonial sure. powers who uh, mm. collaborated to create the state of Israel in Palestine on my land. So uh, uh, Germany, France, England, okay, any other states, the four of these four, they have to come up with a, a state for the Jewish people. Mm. The state, whether it must be in the United States, it's in France, Ah, England, yes. Uh, Why not Germany, the United States? The United States okay, is such Germany. a big supporter. Yes, in the yeah, United States. They have America. to create, you got to give them a Jewish state, a Zionist state, where all mm -hmm. those Zionist uh, crazed people could live in their own state. Okay? Then we'll give them, you know, visas to come and visit uh, Palestine. Okay? <laughs> based, based on uh, no criminal record on yes. each one. Yes, okay? yes. And anybody yes. sure that he is a Zionist is not welcome to Palestine. Yeah. As simple as that. Right. Yeah. You know, I will I will always stick to that. As for the Palestinian Palestinian Jews, okay, of course they will have they have their culture being protected. Uh, the if they want to speak the Hebrew or they will speak Arabic, uh, whatever culture, uh, it's uh, autonomy. They should be granted uh, for them if they want that, or well, they want to continue being Palestinians. It's up to them. You know, I'm sure there's lots of them. We could could trace all these Palestinian Jews who are living in Palestine now to their the original uh, families who lived in in in, uh, in Palestine. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's three hundred thousand of them, two hundred, three hundred thousand. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah, there's. Uh, oh. Yeah, we only some have some seconds left, but I can refer to the neighborhood in Jerusalem, Meir Sharim, the Orthodox, you know, who have lived there continuously. And who carry the Palestinian flag because they don't identify as Zionists? Yeah, uh, yeah, they are. They're actually. They're actually. Uh, they well, they're kind of in a way they're a colonial movement, but it, they moved into Palestine in in the middle to late nineteen uh, hundreds. But still, uh, will will the the Natural Carta uh, will be considered uh, will be given uh, an exception 